Who is Spider-Boy and how is he Spider-Man's sidekick? Today we're going to be looking at Spider-Man issue 11, where we finally find out who is Spider-Boy. When we left off, Spider-Boy was mad at Spider-Man for again claiming he didn't know who the child was. So today, Spider-Boy is going to finally explain his origins. This is Comic Story, and we create audio dramas of comic books that are currently out. And today we're going to be talking about Spider-Man number 11. And if you enjoy it, head over to your local comic book shop and add it to your collection. After chasing Spider-Boy down, Peter stops him. There is no world, nor will there ever be one, where I have a sidekick. There is no we, and more to the point, you're done. Spider-Boy is no more. Spider-Boy jumps up. For real? Who talks like that? Are you trying to be Thor or something? You got better things to do than hang around. Peter quickly webs the boy upside down to the wall, telling him, no, we're doing this now. Spider-Boy is hanging there. Hey, not cool. You can't leave me like this. All the blood's gonna rush to my head. Peter looks at him, really? Because most spider people I know don't have that problem. But either way, you won't have to worry about that anymore seeing as your spidering days are over. You wish. I kinda can't turn it off, remember? I'm a boy who was genetically spliced with a spider. Spider-Man thinks back to the fight where Spider-Boy's head turned into an eight-eyed spider and he bit Electro. Yeah, I remember. What else can you do? I got the usual stuff, spider strength, super leaping, wall crawling, but my spider sense works a little different. It gives off readings of objects and it tells me when other people are in danger. I can also monster out, but I'd rather not. Peter looks at the additional eyes appearing on Spider-Boy's head. Did you just grow those? How do you even use them? With practice. Come on, you know this, Peter! You're the one who got me the training that I needed. It was after the first night that we met when you rescued me from Madame Monstrosity's lab. You didn't know who else to go to other than the one person who couldn't see. So after a few weeks of training under Daredevil, Spider-Boy was able to focus his abilities and eventually control his appearance. From there, the Clasher moved to field trips. They fought baddies while sticking to basic thugs, ninjas, and henchmen. But then when he showed that he was ready, Spider-Man moved him into the real thing, like actual bad guys. Spider-Man wanted to know if that's the moment Spider-Boy started tagging along, that he became the sidekick. And Spider-Boy explained that it wasn't all of the battles, but some of them. He made him promise that he would sit out if they were going up against the big guys, like Carnage or Doctor Doom. Spider-Man kind of accepts this excuse, and then asks him if he's on Team Spidey, where are the web shooters? Spider-Boy says that Spider-Man wouldn't let him have them. They tried once, but there was an incident, and it was really kind of embarrassing. So, Spider-Man moves on. He asks about the sidekick stuff. He explains that he never would have agreed to that, and Spider-Boy tells him that they worked it out years ago, right after his big win. He took out a major bad guy all by himself. It was live, it was televised, and everyone saw it. And after that, people couldn't get enough of him. But even though he may have 360 degree vision, he also doesn't have normal spider sense. So after taking down Killianair, he got captured. But it was really cool. Arcade literally put him into a pinball machine and shot him around so that he'd bang into things. Of course, Spider-Man saved him. But it was a bit of a buzzkill in Murder World. They then fought some crappy clones of each other, and when they were ready for the next batch, everything stopped. It seemed that Arcade was hired by Killianair to kill Spider-Boy, but when Killianair's check bounced, Arcade freed them both. Peter shakes his head. Under no circumstances would I have ever had a kid partner. Spider-Boy again. Are you not listening? We worked as a team! How could you forget? That's the problem. I did forget, because it was erased from the web of destiny. And the only way that that could have happened is if you had been stabbed by a certain magical dagger. Which would mean that I let you, a child, get stabbed on my watch. And because of that, we're not doing this anymore. Spider-Boy responds to him very accurately. Jessica Drew got stabbed! Would you bench her? Or Kane? Heck, you got stabbed in that! Peter jumps down. Alright, you do have a good point. But that doesn't change the fact that if you were my sidekick, You'd be under my care, and I work alone. But while Peter has his back turned, Spider-Boy frees himself from the webbing jumping over, grabbing a hold of Peter's head, flipping him onto his back. How did you do that? How did you get free? And Spider-Boy explains that he doesn't trip Spider-Man's spider sense. And as for the webbing, it's because he has a web fluid dissolver in his bug pack. Sound familiar? 
Peter looks at the small canister. Yeah, it does look like one of mine. Spider-Boy explains that he gave it to him just in case because they are friends. That part didn't happen overnight, but in time, he was more and more trusting to take on bigger and bigger threats. Peter asked what happened then. Spider-Boy says that it all came down to one adventure, and he's not gonna believe it. Who was it? Sinister Six, Red Goblin. Spider-Boy quietly says that it was... Big Wheel. Big Wheel? Okay, explain. Big Wheel was trying to get back at Martin Lee for stealing his company or something. But Big Wheel was planning on getting back at him by destroying one of his projects, the Feast Center. In the giant wheel, there were magnets that he was using to basically spin faster and faster, allowing him to reach crazy speeds. To stop him, Spider-Man gave him a magnetic inverter to throw off the balance of the wheel, but Spider-Boy didn't know how it worked. He isn't very much the science-y type. In the end, he ended up turbocharging the wheel. Thankfully, Aunt May was at the feast center trying to warn everyone, and when Big Wheel aimed right for her, it was Spider-Boy that saved her. Big Wheel ended up destroying the center, but Spider-Boy rescued someone in the process. It wasn't because of who it was, it was because he did save someone. After that, Spider-Man told him that it could have been anyone. One life, every life. Whenever he can, Spider-Boy needs to act. That's what superheroing is all about, and if he does that, he can continue living the spider life. That hasn't changed, right? Peter looks at him. That hasn't changed. But maybe I have changed. When I was stabbed by the magic knife, my spider life was a race and I got to live a normal life. I even had Uncle Ben and it felt right. And while I have to be Spider-Man, you don't have to be Spider-Boy. Just then, Spider-Boy touches an article of clothing and gets a reading that a man is in danger. Gutterball is out to get him. Spider-Boy stops looking at Spider-Man. This is how most of my adventures start. I have to see them through because if I don't, someone's going to get hurt. And I never forgive myself for it. Will you help me? Peter pauses for a moment. All right, you win, but who's Gutterball? He's a bowling alley bandit. He's one of mine. And the two make their way across the city. Spider-Man and Spider-Boy. This Spider-Boy thing looks like it's going to stick, at least for a little while. They have officially created a sidekick for Spider-Man. And on one hand, I hate the idea, and on the other hand, I love the idea because it's something new and interesting for us to explore. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And don't forget to do the rest of the YouTube jazz, and if you want early access, join us over at our Patreon or YouTube memberships. Thank you so much for your continued support, and I'll see you next time right here.